Hello everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. Well, not today's, but <laughs> this month's tutorial, I guess. I'm going to be showing you how to transfer builds from Java to Bedrock. Now, it is extremely easy, however, there is one issue that you need to know whenever you transfer stuff, and I'll show you that right now. Um, so you know whether or not to watch the whole video or only to watch part one, um, which is still in this video. Part one and part two are in the same video, because part one is so short, I don't see a point in even making it into two videos. And part two is really short as well. So this is the issue right here. Whenever you transfer a world from Java to Bedrock, you will have um, these. And then if you load in Java chunks, you'll also have this, um, which can be a bit of a problem, as you can imagine. So depending on what you're doing this for, um, you may care about it. This right here was for a survival spawn, so it doesn't really matter because they're only going to be in here. They're not even going to see outside the map. They don't even know where they are or what's going on. It didn't matter if the chunks don't match up. Um, however, if you want your chunks to match up, if you want your terrain to actually match up or your Minecraft build or whatever to match up, then you're going to want to watch the whole video. Um, but let's get into part one of this video and then we'll get into part two, which is a bit more um, lengthy. So to do this, it's actually extremely simple. I'm not going to go through the entire process. It's just that simple. There's different programs you can use from Universal Minecraft Converter to MCCC Tool Chest. There's paid and unpaid. MCC Tool Chest BE is unpaid. That's what I use for my tutorials. Um, in here, you can go to the top left-hand corner, go to File, then you can Open. And whenever you open, you can open up a Minecraft world and transfer a Java build into a, a Bedrock seed that you already want, or maybe a flat world or whatever, or transfer something from Java to Bedrock, and you can keep doing it in the same world. So like you have the same world on Java that you want on Bedrock or something like that anyway. Um, so then uh, for what we're doing, um, I would expect you to probably just use um, this one, File, then New. Then you go to Tools, Convert, and you go to Bedrock, um, Convert to Bedrock. And you go to the world that you want to convert. So just click on the world you want to convert, which um, I'll just click on the same one. And then you go to Aquatic Format 1.13+, plus, um, which is generally more effective to do not more effective but this is the one that's most up that's up to date the most and you can convert it um just you know like that anyway so and then we can press convert and it will convert it which takes a little bit of time and i want to save time on this tutorial so we're going to just skip that part um, but after that make sure you press save i keep forgetting to mention that um, because i didn't do it um, but if you want it to actually show up you need to press save or press Control S. Either way, save your world some way. Save or save as or press this button. Just make sure it's saved. Otherwise, it will not show up in your Minecraft worlds. Uh, so one thing you might need to do is to also exit Minecraft and go back into Minecraft. That's another thing you need to do. Otherwise, it will not show up. Let me exit out all that. Um, anyway, so now let's actually get into... Um, the world where I show you how to do part two because that's actually it that's all you need to do to transfer your worlds from Java to Bedrock it's that simple um, but to transfer it from Java to Bedrock and fix those what you're going to need to do which I just clicked on the wrong world I wish I could cancel but I can't that's fine though we'll just exit um, you're going to need to load in all of the chunks um, the reason why is because whenever you are um, whenever you have this issue right here, which I, I'll just use as my advantage, here we go. Whenever you have this issue right here, we need to smooth it out. And smoothing out on Bedrock is too difficult for most people to be able to do, or too time consuming. So you're going to need to, to smooth this out on Java, which means you're going to need the a Bedrock seed on Java. Bedrock seeds and Java seeds are completely different. If you took the seed 1111 and, and put that on Bedrock and on Java, and you put that into your Minecraft seeds and you generated a world, it would look different on Java than it would on Bedrock, which is obviously a bit of an issue because if you want your world to look relatively the same, or if you want your terrain to be connected, then you're going to need to connect your world to a Bedrock seed. Which, if you're building on Java, you can't unless you transfer a Bedrock seed to Java, which means that you need to somehow do that. So you have to have it loaded in. You have to load in the chunks and have the chunks be saved. And the way to do that is by going through the chunks, by actually flying through them or walking through them. That is pretty much the only way to do that. So what I do is I have this command block system, not system, but it's like a single command. Um, and it will teleport me round and round in circles, which is this right here. So slash executes, Mr. Jcraft, um, TP at S, forward to the right or left or whatever that is. I'm not entirely sure if it's right or left because I don't pay attention 
pretty sure it's left. I don't remember exactly. Um, but either way, um, you can make it left or right by just make, putting a negative sign. And this is up or down, um, which is nothing. And then we go forward or backwards, um, which this right here is backwards. So backwards 0 0.05 facing this armor stand right here. And if I turn it on, um, I hope I actually still have command in here. Nope, I do not. Um, game rule. Command blocks enabled. Um, true. There we go. And it will do this. And we'll fly around in circles for forever and slowly get further and further away from the armor stand. Now be careful because you may end up going under the ground or too high up. Just sort of keep it um, like this and you can actually fly up or fly down. So you can adjust it after you're already, um, you know, flying through the air. I would say sorry for the lag, but the lag is actually useful because it reminded me why it is lagging. And that's because I have my chunks set up. Um, to render in as much as possible. So I have my render distance set all the way up because it's more effective to do it that way. So don't forget to turn up your rendering distance. Anyway, so that is how you load in your chunks. You just let this run for an hour or two or however long, 30 minutes, um, however long you plan on doing this for. Um, it takes a long time primarily because it's a spiral. So let's say you have a spiral over here and you want it to um, and you have it going too fast. What will end up happening is your spiral will look a little bit more um, like this, which is a bit of an issue as you can imagine because now only a few chunks in the center were actually loaded in. So none of these chunks are usable. All these chunks are blank. So if you want your chunks to be loaded in, it's as I said, it is a spiral. So you want it to be more like this where it keeps going round and round and round and round and never really um, goes away until it gets to like me a point like this. And at this point, now we're starting to lose chunks. Um, and then it's it's relatively okay uh, because at that point you have ch this so many chunks towards the center that it's fine if you lose a couple towards the end. And at that point, you'd probably turn off your computer or something or go to sleep because um, that would be after a while because the bigger it is, the slower it pretty much goes. Um, Unless you made a more complex command block system that would adjust adjust it depending on how many chunks you're load, you've already loaded in for a certain amount of time or whatever, but that's a different thing. Um, for most people, this is all you will need, is this one command right here. So that will load it in, in a spiral as mentioned. Um, so then after that, you will just need to convert your bedrock seed to Java. So we will open up MCC Tool Chess PE or whatever program you are using. Go to file, which well, I'm in MCC tool chess PE, so go to file, go to open, go to your seed that you just loaded in, and then um, it has a lot inside of this one, which I don't think I'm able to see chunk informa information just at the moment, unless I can. That'd be super cool to show you how many chunks that I have loaded in, um, but it doesn't appear that it's letting me at the moment, which is unfortunate. Um, but either way, let's actually get back to what I was doing. Maybe I could find a map. Um, which doesn't really seem like I can, which is unfortunate. Um, anyway, let's just, uh, so you go to convert to Java and you go over to here and you click on new world and it lets you convert to a new world, uh, name your world and you know, you, you convert it. Make sure it's uh, convert to the latest one, which would be 1.14. You could convert to 1.12 or 1.13, depending on what you're doing. Anyway, convert to 1.14. Then what you'll need to do is you will need to go to, uh, sorry, there we go, I'm already on here, there we go. So once you do that, um, you're going to need to, as already previously mentioned, transfer, well, it depends on what you're doing. Okay, yeah, okay, I remember what I was supposed to say now. Depends, depending on what you're doing, you, this might be at the beginning of your process or it might be at the end of your process. So if this is at the beginning of your process, you need to build your worlds inside of this bedrock seed and then you can just transfer it back. Just make sure you don't accidentally load any Java chunks. I'd probably recommend loading into a void world. I mean, um, transferring it to a void world just to be safe. So in, uh, it's sort of hard to explain that, um, this first one, because it is a bit, a bit weird. And most of you will probably be transferring a pre-built world into a bedrock seed. So. I'm not going to linger on that for too long. But anyway, that is a very good method, and that's what I would recommend doing. Anyway, so if you want to do a pre-built one, then you need to take, um, use whatever you're going to be using, which it could even be um, World Painter, depending on how you're doing it. 
So you could use World Painter, MC Edit, World Edit. I would recommend World Edit. Um, here we go, that's step five. So yeah, I have all the links in the description and I don't have the correct World Edit link. That is for a mod for World Edit, which also works really well, which I've done that before. MC Edit also works really well. And World Painter sort of works. It's not as effective as MC Edit or World Edit. Um, definitely not um, at all. So next, once you get your Minecraft world into your Bedrock Sea, doesn't matter how, as long as it's there, now you need to smooth it out, which you can use World Painter or World Edit for. And once you get it smoothed out, all you gotta do is transfer it back to Bedrock, and you're done. Now, many different issues could happy, happen while in the process of doing this, and I'm not really gonna explain how to, um, to fix all of them right now, um, because you pretty much have to figure out how to do it for the most part, um, because you should know what the programs are doing. For the most part, generally use world edit is the most effective and has the least amount of issues um, for when you're smoothing or even whenever you're transferring it into the bedrock seed um, it also depends on what um, transfer tool you're using because some of them have glitches and some of them don't have glitches um, anyway it very much depends on the program you're using and the tools you're using so depending on the tools and depending on the uh, the transfer device, I mean transfer software, m you can get many, many, many different results and many different things wrong. Many things can go wrong. That is one reason why I can't show you how to fix everything. I can't show you how to smooth out the train because there's so many different ways of doing this. So, anyways, uh, so yeah, anyway, so the different uh, mistakes that can happen. Um, so let's see. L one, number one is loading in Java chunks into your world. Don't do that. Don't load in Java chunks, like brand new Java chunks. Bad idea. Um, accidentally delete trees using World Painter. Accidentally load, um, did, accidentally didn't load in a bedrock seed that is big enough. That is another very common one. Um, didn't transfer, or the transfer program is out of date, or the world or World Painter is out of date, um, which is very possible. It could be out of date even though you have the latest version. You probably just didn't update it. And that's why they're a massive issue. Also, when in doubt, restart the entire process. Unfortunately, it's very true. Just restart and use World Edit for everything. Uh, it takes longer, but at least it works and you get it done. Um, anyway, hopefully this makes sense and that you now know how to transfer. If you have questions, uh, maybe check out the Google Doc to see if I answer your questions there. Let's actually see how long we've been doing this. 12 minutes, not that bad. Anyway, this is pretty much it. I don't think I can really explain anything else to be honest, because the rest of it you should know how to do. But uh, for those of you who just wanted to know how to transfer Java World to Bedrock, um, all you may need to do is literally do how I mentioned, and if it doesn't bother you, then keep the, the edges. It's, you know, if no one's going to see it, whatever. But if it's like a roleplay world, unfortunately, this is the pain that you may have to go through. And if you don't know how to use these programs that I mentioned, then I can't really show you how to do them in this video. Uh, but definitely check out some videos on those if you need to. I have one on World Painter, but uh, it's not super, super in-depth for this kind of work. Anyway, hope you had a great, wonderful, sublime day, and God bless. Hello, not sure why you're here, but make sure to comment down below if you actually stayed for this long. I really don't know why you would want to, but um, you can if you want, I guess. Would be interesting to see how many people actually get this far just to hear me say something weird, because I've been doing this for the past few videos. I wonder, I, I do wonder how many people actually notice. Um, so don't forget, comment down below. I really don't know what I'm going to do for the next video though. I think the next video may be the World Machine tutorial. It's been unfortunate that World Machine is paid, um, but there is a free version. So um, I think I might do that next. We'll see, we'll see. Anyway, I uh, should probably get back to work on some stuff I should 
be doing and you know finishing the video instead of doing whatever I'm doing right now so talk to you later